Hello, my name is Cheyenne and welcome to another nail art tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create these, I don't know what to call them. Let's say just patchwork nails. Basically I was looking for an excuse to use all of my new Bluebird polishes. To do this design on my thumb I did sketch something out before and I tried to map the colors to the polishes to kind of help direct me. First one we're going to be using is Read the Broom. This is going to be the base color. It's always best to start with a light color for your base before using any darker colors because it's going to be way harder to paint something that's light on top of something that's dark. I think this polish is super pretty. It almost looks like a rainbow depending on the lighting. You do have to do two coats for this because it is a little tiny bit sheer on the first coat. I loved all the polishes in this collection, but this one was probably my top three. Next, I'm going in with Bark Side of the Moon. I used this in one of my other videos recently, so I'll link that in the cards. I see a orange to red to brown shift in it. Now, using my reference image, I'm going to go and start to try to recreate the shapes that I made. But because this is an abstract pattern, I don't feel like you have to match it completely, have some fun with it. The best piece of advice that I have for painting a design or similar design like this that has straight lines is to drag the brush away from you versus pulling it towards you. That said, if you watch closely, you will see me contradict myself later in this video. The next tip that I have is to push through it because sometimes I feel like when doing abstract designs like these, it can start to look maybe messy or too crazy after you've been staring at it for a while, which is one of the reasons why I hate doing abstract art myself. But I really appreciate abstract art and I think it can be really beautiful. So I always try to imitate it and sometimes I'm not very satisfied with it. As I've mentioned before, my degree is in design studies, which is essentially graphic design. So I'm gonna have some tips later about how to apply graphic design principles to abstract art. I'm now going to go in with it's just a phase which is a dusty purple with a red to purple shimmer in it and surprisingly it was one of my favorites from this collection i must admit i am still not a pro at filming my nail art tutorials yet as you can see as my thumb drifts lower <laughs> And later on in this video, you also might see my resolution kind of tank a little bit. I use my phone to film and it started to overheat a few times. It, luckily when it drops in resolution, it is towards the end when I'm doing my second coats for these colors. So you're not really missing out much. And I was planning on just fast forwarding through that section anyways, just because I don't think people would be really interested in seeing me repaint the same areas I just painted to make sure I have full coverage. Next I'm going to go in with Once in a Boo Moon which is surprisingly my fourth favorite in the collection. I thought maybe I wouldn't like this one as much but I really loved this texture. I don't have anything like it in my collection because I thought I wouldn't ever like something like this but it pairs so nicely with it's just a phase. It's like they were made to be next to each other. Earlier, I mentioned that I wanted to talk about how to apply basic design principles to abstract art. So let's get into that. First things first is I'm going to be using the same colors on both of my hands and mixing the same colors between all of my nails. I'm also going to do a similar design on my other thumb so they can pair together and do a slightly different staircase design, still angular, keeping with that theme on my other fingers, just dumbing down the design a little bit to be a little bit less complex and in this case, very time consuming. Now there were some moments while I was doing this design that I started to maybe question it a little bit. I was worried that it wasn't going to look good, especially since I don't have a lot of confidence in abstract art. And I feel like when you're doing a lot of detail work like this, it can start to look a little bumpy. But once you put on your top coat, it should help everything even out a little bit and it makes me see the design a little bit clearer and I really like how it turned out. Between the gold and purple tones and the vibrance and bold colors, it ended up making this manicure look pretty luxurious. Next, I'm going to go in with the sun will come up tomorrow. 
This was the mystery polish in the bundle and it is a red shimmer with a orange lean and holographic flakies. I'm normally wary about mystery polishes since I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not and I can be a little picky. So I was really happy when I saw this one. This one was super opaque. Same with a few others from this collection. I want to say four out of eight were opaque in one coat. Next, I'm going to go in with Dress to the Canines, which is a reflective glitter inside of a oxblood base. And I was super excited about this one. Since this one is a jelly base, I expected it to be a little bit more transparent, but I found it to be pretty opaque for a jelly. I'm definitely looking forward to an opportunity of wearing this color just by itself without anything else. The thing is, I really love nail art, so it's hard to get away from that from sometimes. Since my designs are kind of time consuming, I generally try to just do one a week. I think it helps keep me motivated and keeps my creative juices flowing. I had a period of time where I wasn't feeling very inspired and I have found that nail art has been a really great outlet for me. I think next year I'll expand from just doing nail art to other nail care content. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I have a few ideas I'm cooking up. Next, I'm gonna go in with I Lie Can't Even, which was a real surprise for me on how much I love this. I don't think I have anything similar, but I thought it would just be a quote unquote boring purple but once it was on my nail I could see this really vivid blue shimmer that ran through it and I love this polish so much I love how deep it is and that blue shimmer I always I'm a big sucker for a blue shimmer so this one was in my top three for this collection I don't know if you noticed but I made a mistake but luckily again this is abstract so you could kind of do with it what you want. I changed the design a little bit because I wanted to fix that mistake. So I just straightened out my lines and painted over the neighboring colors a little bit to kind of make it look intentional. I did that maybe a few times while doing this nail art. And that's because I got a little heavy handed with the colors that I was putting down. I put down some pretty big beads of polish to work with. That was the price that I paid. But again, I think it looks good and no one's gonna notice any mistakes that you know you made because you could cover it up pretty easily with this type of design. And here we have the last color in the collection, which is the first rule of Fright Club. It is a jelly formula with a bunch of blue and green shifty flakies in it or glitters. And I think it's pretty different from the rest, but it still complements the overall color palette. I was also curious how Reed the Broom was going to pair with this whole set but since it is much brighter and almost a spring color and I was surprised how much I liked it with the rest of these shades. This palette ended up reminding me of The Kissed, a painting by Gustave Clement. I've been thinking that next fall maybe I try using this palette again but to recreate that painting on my thumbnail which sounds challenging, but I think it'll be really awesome. It's one of my favorite paintings. I love the colors and the textures and the pattern in it. I'm now going and starting to repaint some areas just to make sure that everything is fully opaque and that there's no patchiness. And since I'm sure that no one wants to watch me repaint my nail and touch everything up, I'm just going to fast forward through this section this definitely wasn't a quick design and I took a lot of breaks if I had to put a number on it based off of my video recordings. It looks like I maybe took 25 minutes from the point where I put down my base coat to putting on my top coat on just painting this one thumb. So I assume if I also did that for my other hand, <laughs> that was probably an hour between both of my thumbs, which is crazy to think about it. But for me, it flew by really quick because I was having fun and enjoying myself. Painting a simplified version of this design on my other fingers probably did take me a total of 25 minutes between all of them. So that is definitely the quicker option if you just did not want to spend as much time here. So the design is now done and I'm going in and locking it down with a quick dry top coat. 
and this will help everything kind of get smoothed out a little bit help it be a little bit less bumpy but also make it dry really quick and dry hard to help make it chip resistant so the hard part is now over i'm going to show you how i did these stair designs on my other fingers i already put down my base colors since i assume that might not be so exciting to watch so on my pointer finger i have read the broom and i'm applying a bark side of the moon i'm starting with the outline first and then we'll fill in the remaining areas later and again i'm doing the same technique as before where i'm painting away from myself you'll have better control of the brush doing it like that i have just a phase as my base color for my middle finger and i'm going in with once in a boo moon to again create a geometric stair-like shape I always try to fill in my shapes with the actual brush that came with the polish. I think it can be easier to handle sometimes, but also help create less texture on the nail. The smaller brushes can sometimes be a little bit too fine and drag some of the polish, creating some indents. So if you can use your applicator brush from the bottle. It might be a better option if you can, just to keep everything smooth. I'm then going back to my pointer finger with Bark Side of the Moon, which is that orangey red color. It's just not as opaque as I would have liked. Read the Broom is extremely bright and shimmery, so it's kind of showing through a little bit. On my ring finger, I have The Sun Will Come Out tomorrow. I'm going in and applying Dress to the Canines on top of this to create that geometric shape. I was worried that since this is a jelly polish, again, that it may not show up really well. I was surprised by how opaque it was. And unlike the other ones, I wanted the block to be on the bottom section just to make the design a little bit more dynamic. But I think it still goes well together because you're still keeping that same shape between all of the nails. Having the design be slightly different from nail to nail, I think help ties in the thumbnail because it is not uniform itself. I have I Like Ant Even on my pinky and filming my pinky I always find super challenging to get in shot and also my pinky's just so small. Eventually I figured it out. Uh, hopefully this is a better angle. The only thing I would change about this manicure is probably putting the first rule of Fright Club on top I Like Ant Even. The first rule of Fright Club is a jelly so it just wasn't popping as much as I would hope. Ultimately, I still think it looks fine, but I think I would have swapped them around and maybe have the first rule of Fright Club as the base color and I like can't even as the geometric shape, but live and learn. Don't make the same mistake as me. Again, I loved how this turned out. Let me know if you like this design as well or if you will be trying it yourself. I'm trying to put out new videos every Saturday. See y'all next time. Bye.